Good morning, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I actually had intended to not record anything today, but instead simply return home. However, as many of you know, last night was a complete fiasco, and uh, it continued on into this morning, actually. I discovered that uh, this mic was having issues even when I was trying to do a recorded video. Um, so in any event, many audio issues at first followed up with me simply trying to use my phone to give the viewers at least something. And then I discovered to my horror that no matter what I did, I wasn't going to bring the viewers anything because the internet was completely clogged up with everybody live streaming the event uh, for personal uses or whatever, regardless, completely crammed the connection. And I don't think anybody live streamed the event at all. As a result, I also discovered, of course, that I didn't even have any recorded uh, footage of what was what happened. All of this, I thought, was just going to remain in my memory. But fortunately, there were a number of wonderful viewers who came up to introduce themselves last night. It occurred to me that maybe they might be able to help me out, that they might have recorded something, and indeed, they did. So finally, I can bring you the events of last night as I saw them. Once again, I don't even think any footage can do justice to seeing a night launch in person. It just absolutely blew my mind. An amazing experience, not only for myself, of course, but also for Rocket Lab, who became, in a single stroke, the preeminent small sat launch provider on the planet. 10 nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is what the vast majority of you got to see last night, but this is what I saw. And to the casual observer who doesn't live for rocket launches, really isn't very apparent as to why the hell you would want to go through any amount of inconvenience to see something like this, as opposed to seeing a Rocket Lab live stream. But that's simply because people who don't get into rocket launches just can't understand the excitement behind it and to be honest this footage cannot do any justice to just how much the rocket lit up the entire night sky and left me and everybody else struck with a sense of wonder and if you're wondering well why didn't you use better telephoto lenses that sort of thing the electron rocket was so tiny that even people with the best telephoto equipment couldn't even really identify identify the rocket prior to the launch. This is about the best telephoto view that anybody could get, and even then, the tiny electron was barely visible. This was more an experience for people who just wanted the entire horizon view and also the rocket climbing into the sky. By the way, I get some of that as well, but it just wasn't something that you're going to be able to approximate, at least as far as the you are their kind of experience from the pad from this far away. It's just not practical. And yet, at the same time, I have utterly no regrets whatsoever. This is such an amazing view, and I am so grateful to the viewers that made all of this possible. By the way, for any of you who contributed to making this trip happen, thank you so much for your support. And please rest assured that I have the information infrastructure in place at Cape Canaveral and at Boca Chica to bring you a quality live stream in the future, including broadband and camera equipment. So once again, this Wallops Island experience, even though I was able to bring you something, was also a learning experience for the future. But what about Rocket Lab? I mean, what happened with the mission? Well, as many of you have probably heard, it was a complete success. And not only was it a success as far as the mission
Edition and the customer Hawkeye 360, but also firmly established Rocket Lab as the preeminent small sat launch provider in the world, a global launch provider capable of delivering satellites from anywhere as long as they have the infrastructure in place, something that Virgin Orbit failed to do in Cornwall, but something that Rocket Lab unquestionably succeeded in doing, and as I say, established themselves as the go-to launch provider for anybody that wants to send small sats to a dedicated orbit and doesn't want to have to wait for a SpaceX rideshare that might be going to the orbit that their satellites need to be deployed to. This kind of mission was something that Taylor made for Rocket Lab, and their success again demonstrated that this is the only company that you really want to go to for this kind of mission. Rocket Lab has invested heavily in the Wallops Island region, building an entire launch complex similar to what they have in New Zealand, supplementing their existing capabilities with the two launch complexes combined, supporting more than 130 electron launch opportunities per year, delivering unmatched flexibility for rapid responsive small satellite launch, or so they claim, and last night they made a very powerful statement. In addition to that, they have an integration and control facility within the Wallops Research Park, a short drive from the pad itself. The facility is home to state-of-the-art payload integration clean rooms, vehicle processing facilities, and a mission control center. The launch pad and production complex for Rocket Lab's large reusable neutron launch vehicle will also be located at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, and construction on the neutron production complex is underway now. So yeah, everything that happened last night was the first extremely important step in regards to Rocket Lab's ambitions of launching from North America. This is something that put them very much on the map as far as satellite manufacturers in the United States. Now they don't have to worry about shipping their satellites to New Zealand. Instead, they can launch out of the U.S. Now, even though Rocket Lab's five to six million dollar per launch price cost is substantially higher than what kind of price you could get from SpaceX on a rideshare mission, again, you need to keep in mind that if you want to launch at a particular time and into a particular orbit, rideshare simply isn't going to cut it. There are so many customers on a rideshare mission, and the primary payload. In the orbit it's heading to is what's important to SpaceX, not the secondary rideshare customers. Now, there are plenty of customers who can still make use of rideshare if they don't really care what orbit they're heading to, if just getting to low Earth orbit is enough. But for Hawkeye 360, in order to provide the radio frequency geospatial monitoring that they carry out with their constellation, it was incredibly important that they get delivered to this particular orbit orbit, which by the way was only accessible from the Wallops Island facility. New Zealand is better for polar orbits, Wallops Island is better for mid-lateral orbits. And once again, this expanded capability also allows Rocket Lab to compete for a variety of different orbits, not just the kinds of orbits that used to be available from New Zealand. So it expands Rocket Lab's competitive capabilities across the board with small sat providers for many missions in the future. And by the way, there are lots and lots of upcoming missions on Rocket Lab's docket. It's kind of mind-boggling, actually. And again, very difficult to believe this small, punchy, little company out of New Zealand becoming the biggest small sat launch provider throughout the world. That just doesn't seem at all possible, but it is exactly what Rocket Lab has been able to do, leaving everybody else in catch-up mode. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. And once again, I have many other launches to attend at Cape Canaveral and Boca Chica. Lessons having been learned, I have plans in place to make sure that what happened at Wallops 
Phillips Island will not be repeated for those launch opportunities, so please check the description for various ways to support my ongoing activities in bringing you the best quality coverage from around the world. And as always, stay angry about space.